Coach, what are some biggest takeaways from game one? Well, we won. That's good, right? Uh, I thought we played pretty well. A lot to be desired. You know, we're going to have to play much better this week to win. Uh, but was pleased with it being a week one performance. A lot of our guys played with a lot of energy and, um, you know, took care of the ball. And uh, But we got to make a big jump this week to go to be able to go win this game. Very, Pat Bryan mentioned after the game that we kind of just trusted them and threw it up for them a little bit when they got one on one coverage in those matchups. What's that a sign for him or, or just your offense in general? Well, I mean, obviously these guys work a lot around uh, around the year uh, without us around, you know, and they develop the chemistry uh, through, you know, one on ones, throwing in the summertime and the indoor. And uh, I think that's just a product of, you know, going into year two of being around the guys that he's around. And obviously him and Pat have been together for now a little bit more of an extended period of time. So, uh, and Malik as well. I'm starting every day that he throws more with Zakari and, you know, Hank Beatty. And it's, you just develop more chemistry. So at the end of the day, you know, I mean, one-on-one is the best you're going to get. And um, you're not going to get one-on-none very often in the game. And so you get one-on-one, you got to be able to take advantage of it. You got to throw, a, give a guy a chance to make a play. And then we got to make plays. And we did that, uh, you know, for, fortunately last week. And that'll be something that'll be critical for, for us moving forward. We saw a couple different combinations of two back sets, whether it's K May or K Jordan. What do you like about what that adds to your offense and how comfortable are you guys offensively and kind of that look? Well, I mean, we're just trying to use our roster the best way that we know how, right? That's always a job of a coach, uh, with, you know, no matter what side of the ball, obviously. But for me, being in charge of the offense is to look and evaluate, you know, under the direction of Coach B of what. Uh, you know, what we feel like is uh, the strengths of our team and uh, to be able to use those. We feel like we got good depth at running back. Uh, you know, we're a little thinner at tight end, and so it just kind of makes sense to, to use that in um, some opportunities. And I thought it looked pretty well. It's something that obviously, you know, whatever those groupings are, we're going to continue to, you know, be able to try to be multiple in that in that regard. And uh, But I thought off, you know, the first game, I thought it looked pretty well. How does Caden stack up as a real lead blocker? I'm saying. How does Caden stack up as a lead blocker with Aiden behind him? Well, I mean, I think, you know, I think pretty good. I mean, he's just a good football player, right? I mean, Caden is just, you know, he's a big, strong guy that can run and jump and cut. And I mean, you saw him covering a kick, you know, I mean, like, so I would think that, uh, you know, the, the rep that he got it on directly, I mean, he did a great job of swallowing up the edge. And, um, and so, you know, that's a, those guys are unselfish, you know. I mean, that, that's what our team is, is just whether they have the ball or not, it's playing without the ball. That's the true tell of a guy. Uh, receiver tied in across the board, you know, is how we, and I thought our guys played with a lot of energy across the board when they didn't have the ball, and that's a good sign. What did you see from Kansas on uh, tape against Lindenwood, or obviously as the case may be, and what are you expecting that carries over from last year? Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously you saw them, uh, you know, take care of a Lindenwood team and, and play really good defense and played the same structure and um, front that they've been, uh, you know, obviously the return coordinator's been with, with, uh, with them for a long time. Um, and uh, with the head coach too, they go way back. So systematically, you kind of know what to expect um, in that regard. And they're really, really good at what they do and the side of their scheme. And I saw more of that starting the 2024 year off, a pickup where they left off last year. Uh, and so got a tons of respect for the way that they play football on the defensive side of the, 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 the side. You know, they, they play great fundamentals and they play very fast and they know their scheme very well. How much does last year's inform what you want to do this year? Well, anytime you play somebody that's the same coordinator, um, you know, and with some of the same players, there's a good baseline start of, you know, what to expect, but you would, you would expect both sides of the ball to mix things up uh, to some degree from what, uh, what it was last year. But, uh, you know, last year we got, you know, just honestly, we just got, um, you know, out coached and, you know, outplayed and, um, and they, they play really hard. We're going to have to match that intensity and, and play much better this year. You mentioned about potentially being thin at tight end after Cole's injury, but it seems like you really like the top two guys in Tanner and Henry and, mm -hmm. and really can ride those guys as much as you can. Yeah, I think, I, I think they're good players. And I think obviously Tanner is really playing well and Henry uh, is, continues to, you know, he's not as quite as experienced as, as Tanner. Um, and has been, you know, a uh, little bit, was a little bit limited in the spring. And so, um, you know, I think he's continued to uh, hit his stride. And, and obviously, like kind of our team, we want him to play much better, you know, a lot better in week two than he did week one. That goes across every position. And, but I do feel like those guys can, you know, service what we're trying to get done in, in, in the two tight end look. 
and uh, it's something that's important for us uh, to be able to be, able to be functional in. Colin Dixon's a guy that we saw early. We've heard his name, obviously, throughout camp. What has he done to kind of move up that depth chart and put himself in that position? Yeah, he had a phenomenal spring. I mean, every, the people may have seen the spring game, but the people that didn't get the glimpse of that, I mean, through literally his first his first scrimmage was the only day last spring that wasn't really, really good. And it was really his first scrimmage action. And he didn't play extremely well that day. And then from that point forward, he just had a great spring. Picked that up where we left off in the fall. He's a very intelligent. Um, he provides provides a lot of flexibility because he can play any position on our offense, and uh, as far as in the receiver room, you know, and um, just has been super consistent. And uh, he's he really plays the game at a high level as far as just the details and uh, reliability, consistency, uh, and he's got a good ability too. So he's been he's been a really nice surprise, uh, not surprise for us, but he's been a he's a, one of the young guys that have emerged that has earned our trust. Barry went under center like about a handful of times. Just what does that look give you? Because it's something you obviously you didn't do a lot last well, year. Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, just, uh, you know, it's, it's the easiest way to get direct the ball directly from the quarterback to the running back, right? Uh, there's good play action opportunities there uh, as well. Uh, gets the back zero, you know, uh, neutraled out to where you can go right or left. And so uh, there's some good things about it overall. And we've gotten much more comfortable at doing that through the course of last year. That wasn't something that we probably just were super comfortable with last year uh, for Luke. Um, you know, John was a little bit more comfortable because of his background and training. And so we worked hard in the off season to get more comfortable because it's something we believe in and something that we think that's going to be a part of our offense. Coach, what did you, what did you see from offensive line play? It seemed like a lot of the success in the running game came on the stretch plays outside <coughs> zone. Do, do you want to get more from the inside gap plays? Yeah, we got to yeah, we got to be better in our in our inside. Um, you know, um, a running game, and that's something, you know, we're, we're a zone running team. Everybody knows that, that plays us or watches us, you know, and so, but we did, you know, the good news is you got to have enough complimentary plays if somebody's taking one thing away that you can counter with, uh, you know, an, a, a complimentary scheme that gets, put your players in the best chance, uh, you know, the best opportunity to succeed. And so um, I thought it was a good solid performance to protect it pretty well. Um, there was a lot of good things up front. Uh, but there was obviously room for improvement, just like there was at quarterback, receiver, tight end, and running back. And that's going to need to make a big jump this week for us to go win this game. And Melvin had a fair number of kind of wow plays. Yeah, right. That was what, does he, what did he bring maybe in that? that well, order? since Melvin's been here, he's brought an infectious personality to our room of, of toughness and uh, personality. And he loves the game. And uh, I think all of our, you know, we got a, a whole room and a locker room full of guys that love the game. You can't listen. You can't, you can't play at this level and put the time and commitment in uh, and not really love it because it's a, it is a grind and uh, it's a, it's a strong commitment. Uh, and so I think we got a whole team that loves the f game of football, but he, he kind of outwardly expresses that a little bit more than some, you know, and. Uh, He's a vibrant personality that just just soaking up every opportunity moment that he gets to play. He's made us better uh, because of that uh, personality, and uh, we got to get him cleaned up too. You know, I mean, like he's got to tidy some things up. But the physicality, the intent, um, the way he plays the game is uh, is really infectious, and he had a really good start to the first week. The receiver depth has been kind of a theme we've talked about for a few times we've mm -hmm. talked to you. But how do you functionally make that work in a game where you have seven, eight guys? that you're comfortable with and just kind of sort through that? Well, I mean, obviously it was really warm the other night, you know, so that was a, a contributing factor to some of the rotation. I mean, there was guys that needed breaks quickly because it, the heat index was really high. And so we, uh, but we knew going into the game, it was going to be warm and we had planned and practice for that and worked on guys in rotations and everybody that played in the game had earned the right to play in the game um, and a, a receiver. And, um, you know, that's, you, you earn that through practice, you earn that through repetition, you earn that through, uh, over the course of time, you know, like that's not just something that was a one week or a one day that that was through a collection of practices of camps and springs and summers of guys that had that were out there. And we've got a lot of confidence and a lot of guys in our room. And I think that showed the other night and the way they played. And we're going to need the whole village for us to be successful uh, this season. With, with Luke, that's another com like comfortable confidence. That's been something again we've talked about. Is there any like mannerism with him in a game? that you see that, that maybe you didn't see in the first two or three starts last year that kind of exudes or you maybe know he's got that? Well, I mean, I think I've seen it in practice more in, in response to, you know, uh, challenging moments or whatever. There are always going to be challenging moments, and especially when you're playing that position. I mean, you're going to 
you're not going to like every sing, single thing, every single throw, every single decision. So I think response to failure has been uh, positive and uh, saw that even in the course of the game. You know, there's a few things that we would have liked back uh, at that position and uh, they didn't really let it phase him very much and came in and threw the ball very accurately. And uh, so I think he's in a good spot, but obviously the challenge ahead of us this week is, is significant. And, um, you know, it will be able to ratch up in, in speed and, 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 and athleticism this week and, a, and a, you know, in a, in a marquee matchup and a, and a big, you know, Saturday night game at home. And he's got to play with poise and, um, and know that the windows are going to be tighter. And, you know, so there's a, there's a good challenge ahead of him for this week to respond to that. But I like the way he started week one, obviously. Would it mean to get Donovan some reps in the, in the game, um, even late in the game? What would that mean for him? Reps are reps, you know, uh, reps are reps. And um, and those those matter when it, with game reps, you know. There's there's no substitute for those. There's just no substitute for getting a guy out there on that field to to now they know okay this what this is what it feels like, you know. Like it's it's not a whole lot different practice, but there's more people in the stands. The play clock's the same, you know. The, there's only 11 guys out there, so uh, it was good for him to get his feet wet and uh, you know to get that get that out of the way. Uh, and you know, it's so obviously he's got to be game ready and, and continues to work during the week to be game ready, and that opportunity arises. And I feel good about where he's at right now. Aiden, you guys were excited about to, to get him out there. Obviously, he got the start, but I hate to bring up the name, but like, is there some similarities to what he can do on those outside zone stretch to chase what he did, and maybe what you didn't have last year with yeah. him fully healthy? Yeah, I think that's fair. I think, I mean, um, you know, as far as the skill set goes, I think it's somewhat comparable. I mean, we're still. You know, figuring that out as we go. You know, we think obviously through practice and what they've shown in games to this point, we've got a good feel for that. But we want to constantly improving their cross the board skill set, and uh, that's a work in progress. Always, Thad does a great job with those guys, and so but yeah, Aiden, Aiden, uh, obviously getting the ball in the perimeter and stretching the defense a little bit. Obviously with his speed, him and Khalil are two of the more dynamic guys we got in the room there, and. Uh, obviously, within their own right, Josh and Caden are very dynamic for big guys, you know. But it's a different, it's a different skill set. We all know that, and uh, we just got to continue to play to those strengths and accentuate those strengths for them to be successful. How the helmet communication go? Well, it went pretty well. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was good, and uh, you know, just had a couple of small hiccups. I mean, it's like I'm Inspector Gadget, you know, on, <clears throat> on the sideline. I sit down, buttons are beeping, and. In between series was a lot more difficult than if, you know in between the game I'm trying to sit down and watch the iPad and I'm beeping and buzzing and vibrating all over the place so I didn't know what was going on that was a little bit weird for me so I had to start standing up because every time I sat down I was switching channels so there's some things to work through in that regard but as far as Luke and I and the communication with the quarterbacks I thought it went really well uh, there's just a time that's 15 seconds sneaks up on you really fast I'll say that you know I mean it like you think you know, you would think that just thinking about it, like the play clock starts at 40. I mean, you got 25 seconds to get it all in, you know, before it shuts off. And you would think that you could, you know, you know, have some time to sort it out a little bit. But it happens really quickly. And uh, you're, at, you're at 18 or 19 before you know it. And then you got to get that last bit of communication in. But we're set up and we're sustainable without the headset communication. Obviously, it's an enhancement for what we're trying to do. But if we get caught in that moment, we have the ability to get the play in no problem you know, through uh, traditional traditional ways in college football. But it was a good thing. It was a good experience, and it's something we're going to continue to obviously uh, use to hopefully to our advantage. And I think the quarterbacks liked it. Um, and it was, it was a good first game in that regard. Barry, have you found the tablets to be really helpful for what you're trying to accomplish? Or, or are you trying to – or is it new for you too? Well, it's obviously new for me. And, uh, I mean, it's, they're certainly not harmful, you know. I mean, that's, that's clear after going through week one. Um, it's kind of interesting. It's one of the things that, you know, on the get, day after the game, it's like, uh, you know, when you watch the film with them, they're like, yeah, coach, I, you know, I've already, I I've already watched that. that. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, I saw that one, yeah, you know, yesterday, you know, so that, that's an interesting dynamic the day after the game, you know, obviously you don't, you have time to slow it down and coach with a lot more detail than, than you do during the game. But there was, uh, it was interesting moments, you know, you get right to the heart of the issue, you know, because sometimes what you see and what really happens are two different things, especially from a, a field vantage point. You know, you don't see as things as well. And so you, you, in your mind in the past, you always thought, okay, well this happened or I can't run that anymore. Or, that was a bad call. And sometimes you look back at it and say, well, maybe it wasn't that bad of a call. We got to tweak what we're doing or, 
you know, and sometimes it is a bad call. You know, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm not saying the video always exonerates you from, you know, any any miscue or whatever, but it certainly is out, it allows you to uh, make those quicker adjustments. I thought it was an interesting. I thought our guys handled it pretty well. Last one for Coach Long. Yeah, it comes down the touchdown pass to Malik. Luke said his headset maybe didn't work. There was some sort. I think that was a play. There was a touchdown pass where his headset went out. I'm just curious from your vantage point. Was it? Mm-hmm. Just get the play in a different way. Did he? I don't want to say ad lib. Is he, he trying to claim call? Is he <laughs> no, 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 no. But like, I'm just curious. Maybe what you remember happened on that? Was it just yeah, I think that was. I over? think that was among. We had a couple little small glitches that that there were just minor. That there was a couple of times where I lost communication outside of the 15 seconds. Um, and you know, as soon as we have a system for that, you know, as soon as he knows, like I can't. Wait a minute. Hold on. I didn't. I didn't hear him. You know. Uh, you know, or he didn't hear me, then it's like, okay, get your, you know, get your eyes over here and let's, let's, let's communicate this in a traditional no huddle way. And that's what we did.